Hi everyone, welcome to another lesson at Edu Solutions Institute. Now today we're looking at IB physics syllabus and another HL topic of relativity. Now last week we focused on the culmination of the angular momentum principle. All right, so we finished that first aspect of the HL physics topic of mechanics. So now let's delve into the second HL topic of relativity. Before we start our topic, let me just say thank you guys for your support in this channel because on this weekend, we have reached 1,000 subscribers. So thank you for your support. I hope that this channel has given you information that has assisted you with classes or with examinations, and I'll continue to try my best to support you guys on your journey of being great physics and science students overall. Now, let's delve into what is relativity. So today's lesson is just the basics of what relativity is and what it has to offer in our coming sessions. Now, the first thing to know about relativity is to know the term that's called the reference frames. Now, a reference frame is simply a way of representing the position and the motion of a particle in space. So Newton believed that motion was constant in all reference frames, meaning if I am in a car moving or someone is outside observing that car is moving, he thought that all motion were the same. So if I'm looking at the person outside and the person looks at me inside, we are both seeing the same thing happening, right? And Einstein and others showed that this is not exactly true. So in this course, we'll focus mostly on inertial reference frames. Inertial means that it's not accelerating. So it's either the object is stationary or the object is moving at a constant speed. All right. And just for reference, we have four dimensional space-time universe. We have three, which are the X, Y, and Z for the position of particles. And the fourth one is for the time dimension. Now, if we look at this example, if we take an object that is fired from a moving cart, right, and then it's being catched by that same moving cart, then we have two cases where we can see this object. Now, the first one is if I'm outside of that cart, and just observing that activity or that event, I will see it in a parabolic motion, meaning that when the ball is fired upwards and then the car goes forward, it receives the ball in the front. Now, if I was in that cart and the same event happened, I would see that event moving in an up-down motion, which is the second image here. So the point of view of relativity is very important and that's where the reference frames come into play. So therefore, if we are in different reference frame, we will see an event happening in different patterns, right? And that's what we're going to explore in the principle of relativity, all right? So we see that the same motion is seen in two different ways by two different observers. So it's the same event happening, but we see it happening in the in different manner, right? So the outside person will see it happening in a parabolic motion. The inside person will see it happening in a, just a vertical motion. Now, <clears throat> it brings us now to the postulates of special relativity. We have that all laws of physics are, in this, are the same in all inertial reference frames. 
So therefore, in all reference frames I will focus on, all physical physics laws are the same. And they are, and that there is no absolute correct reference frame, all reference frames are equally valid. So therefore, if I'm the person that was seeing this event happening in a parabolic motion, it is true for the same person that was seeing it in a vertical motion. So we do not make a reference frame invalid because of the observation that is seen. So <clears throat> now, if we, a set of axes can be used to represent the motion of particular objects. Now, in this case, this object is moving in the X plane, right? So the arrow represents going to the right in our X plane. Now, if it's moving at a constant velocity, then its position at different times can be shown by the line Vt. And Vt is the formula that we will use to find the distance that is being moved in that plane. Because speed is equal to distance over time, so distance would be the speed times the time. So V is the speed multiplied by the time. Now, let's look at this different uh, this motion from another point of view. What is, so what if our object was actually in a railway car moving at a constant velocity towards the right? So in this case, some stationary observer would actually measure the position of this object to be the sum of the railroad's car velocity and its own velocity. So what this means is, if we put the same object that was just moving to the right with a distance of vt to now put it on a cart, so it's still moving with a distance vt, but it's been moved now on an external cart moving with a velocity v, right? So therefore, the total distance or position change would be the sum of the position chain from the reference frame plus that additional reference frame. So Galileo, Galileo knew that you would add the two positions, the object and the railroad cars, to determine the position of the object in, it, in your own non-moving reference. And that's where we get one of the first formulas that says the position after moving would be equal to the VT, which is the stationary in reference frame, the stationary reference frame motion plus the external reference frame that is moving that position as well, right? So we call the X with the little dot at the top, X prime, right? So you'll hear once it has that little dot at the top, it will be referred to as prime. So we have the X prime, Y prime, you will see that being used regularly. So these increases in velocities are called boost. And there is a relative simple way to describe these changes as they are called Galilean transformations. All right. So if we look at this situation here, what is the velocity of the red relative to the pink car? the pink car relative to the red car and relative to the brick wall. So in this case, we have three different reference frames, right? We have a reference frame that is the brick wall, is it stationary? We now have the pink car reference frame, which is moving at a specific 15 kilometers per hour speed. And then we have the red car that is of a different speed. So it's a different reference frame of 65 kilometers per hour. Now, if we had three persons, one in each of these reference frames, observing an event, right? The event could be just someone throwing a ball up in the air, right? Each person will observe that event happening in a different manner, right? But according to the laws, we will always give those three reference frames the benefit of the doubt that the, their observation of the event is true. And based on our calculations going forward, we'll validate if these events that they're recording were actually true or 
they were not based on which reference frame they are observing from. Now, <clears throat> translation is one direction. So if the distance between the origin of two inertial reference frame S and S prime is X, and what that means if we look at two different reference frames, the position between them, we can call it X, then the position of X in S is relative to the position of X prime in from S prime. So therefore what we have is that X prime, which is the distance between both reference frames is equal to the distance from one reference X, um, one reference frame minus the distance from the X prime or the S prime reference frame, sorry. All right, we did our velocities for the different motion. All right, and here is an example of using these formulas to validate. So a car is traveling at 45 kilometers per hour on a road. A second car passes the first car with a relative speed of 50 kilometers per hour to the first car. What is the relative velocity of the second car to the first car? Right, so notice that the first car is 45, so it's a different reference frame. The second car is moving at a different speed, right, of 15 relative to the 45. So in this case, that 15 first car is actually moving 15 more than the 45 for it to pass it relative to 15. Now, what we want to know is what's the relative velocity of the second car to the road, right? Because here we have three reference frames. The first 45 car and the car was which was going at 60 kilometers per hour and the road, which is the reference frame that's not moving. So what I want you to do is type your answer. What do you think the answer will be with the second car moving in reference to the, the road? All right. It's not as hard as you think. So let me know in your comment section what your answer will be. And I'll reveal the answer in next week's lesson. So thank you for watching. I hope you understand the basis of relativity as we delve in in future lessons on the more complex part of the topic of relativity. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.